Hey, Aqua Seekers. Welcome to October and welcome to the Existential Shift. If you're new, I'm very happy to have you. And if you're not new, I'm very happy to have you. <laughs> Would you look at that? All right. What's going on with my Aquarius for the month of October? Show me the next month, please. I'm working with the Rider Weight Tarot. Judgment and Two of Pentacles. So, <laughs> you're awakening. Oh, Mercury is no longer retrograde. I have no excuse. You are awakening. You're waking up to yourself, to who you are. Your spirit is agitated. It's like it's going into an accelerated progression mode. You know yourself in ways that you have forgotten. And this brings about inevitable change and with it, inevitable alleged dilemmas. Alleged dilemmas because the dilemma comes from who you were before this, before judgment, right? And now the things are starting to show themselves to you from within you. It calls for some changes. You need now to decide between the past self and the seemingly new self, but more so ancient self that is reawakening hate. So it's not really a dilemma. It's inevitable, you know, for you to pursue what is now becoming and part from the old, the old you, the old manifestations surrounding you, and you're debating because, well, you have to debate or consider the options and the pros and the cons. I mean, this is too big of a change not to give it some thought. However, nope. You actually know exactly what you need to do. The answer is very, very clear and evident. The dilemma is facade that your mind is forcing you to have because, well, it's a sensible thing to do. But you already know, you already know the answer. The decision that you need to make it's really aligned with your truth, with your spirit, and with your destiny, as it seems here with the Ace of Swords. The universe is giving you a push. It's really directing you in your right direction because you seem to have been vacillating. And that's okay. Big fluctuations and energies like this it's human to vacillate. It's human to debate. It's human to be in a dilemma. But you're not guided to do the human mundane surface level thing. You're guided to just follow your spirit. Queen of Cups, Eight of Swords. Yet you're still inclined to stay emotionally bonded, binded, bondaged to the old mindset of you. And when I say old, literally it could have been changing two months ago, two years ago, two days ago. But still, it's in the past, but you don't yet want to make it the past, yet you are pushed to do so by the universe, by everything, by your reality, by your mechanism, by your spirit again, by the universe. The emotional attachments, though, are still holding you back. A sense of fake loyalty. Nine of Cups, Nine of Swords, and Ten of Wands. Something that you tell yourself you should do that is a part of you that you love, but you no longer love. No longer care about as you used to care about. 
Maybe there's a level of guilt. How come I don't care about something that I've cared so much about before? Well, you don't. You don't think about this person. You don't care about this person. Every now and then they come to your mind and you're like, oh, I'm worried about them. I care about them. I, they mean something to me. And this reading says that you don't care. Now, I'm not saying it's, if it's good or if it's bad. I'm not saying it with judgment or with admiration. I'm just... It's kind of like looking in the mirror, looking at this reading for you. I mean, it's just a reflection of how you feel. Is it okay? I don't know. I don't know the story. I don't know the ins and outs of this specific story that is yours. But I do know that you want out. You want out. Because something about this situation, person, place, past, doesn't make you feel good about yourself. Reminds you of what you haven't done yet or what you haven't accomplished yet. And maybe you don't want to be that person. But it seems like as long as you're in a place of comparison to someone else to something else, you are not in pursuit of what you can be because you're still emotionally focused on what you should be in relation to this person, to this thing who is. And your spirit is like, you tried to do it impress with love, with compassion, with empathy. You tried to be the containing and the loving. And right now, maybe you just can't. Maybe there is something for you to heal and to do for yourself. Five of Pentacles and Ace of Cups. Maybe you need to pour unconditional love to the aspects in you that feel deprived in relation to. Because that always comes from a place of emotional lack or emotional pain. Or feeling like we're blocked from the divine in ways that we can't seem to receive energy from the divine so we feel like we need to look around us and take or explore through what is around us aka people situations but you're guided to cut out these situations not because there's something wrong with them necessarily i don't know more so so you could be forced to learn how to generate energy love manifestation power creativity, inspiration, straight from source, when it's not in relation to or in fluctuation in comparison to others. So take this time, at least of October, to mother yourself and not others. Because I'm picking up that some of you are trying to love someone that you feel like is worthy of your love, and maybe they are. However, you can't because your source of love to them is them. So in order to give them, you take from them. I don't know how that, well, I can, I can think of how it makes sense, but you apply it to how it makes sense to you, right? So it's not really giving. It's just, it's taking and then giving back. So it was there to begin with. So even though you might have the illusion of giving to them, you're not actually giving to them. And you're just maintaining and sustaining this cycle of not being able to receive from pure source, energy from pure source, hence to truly give to yourself and to others. So cut yourself from your sources of energy, be it this one specific person. Now, 
it's tricky because I said cut yourself from the, your source of energy, but some of you are not aware that you're that they are your source of energy. You have the mindset of you are their source of energy. But take a moment and see if this applies to you. Maybe it's not your reading, right? Take a moment to genuinely ask yourself if this applies to you. What I'm giving, am I giving from me or and or from source? Or am I giving from something that I've taken first? Because then it's not a gift, it's paying back a debt. Now, paying back a debt has the connotation of finances, but it's very much so energetic. Some of you out there, not all of you, but some aquas out there are taking energy from someone or from something and then you give to it or to them, and then you're in the mindset of, oh, I'm always giving to this person when it's actually, you're giving them what you've taken from them. That's not healthy for you, definitely not healthy for them. And it deprives you of your, of practicing, of, of, of focusing on the practice of receiving energy from the infinite source that exists, right? In this polar reality, it's a constant give and take nature's equilibrium, right? But in higher dimensions, there's infinite energy to give you. you. just We just have to tap into it. It's not as easy as it sounds. Because we're so bound to this earthly realm of give and take of polar uh, hermetic laws, we feel like if we win something, we got to lose something. And if we lose something, we got to win something. But there is a way to connect straight to source and not be bound by emotional fluctuations of give and take. You can give without feeling deprived. You can give without taking first. As long as you're in this cycle, you can't really, your system is not wired to try to work on tapping into that. I've said this several times in different ways. I know I'm reiterating. I'm sorry. I'm just trying to make sure that the message is conveyed properly and clear. I have two aces, two nines. Ace of swords, ace of cups. Uh, nine of swords, nine of cups. So water, air, water, air. But the one and the nine. There's this completion of a way of thinking, completion of a way of feeling, and guidance from source to get to your actual infinitely loving possible self. For example, if you have relationships in which you don't really want to be in, but somehow they are maybe less successful than you are, or maybe less capable than you are, or maybe more in need of you in one way, shape, or form. And so being around them makes you feel like the hero, like the giver, like the... But it's at their expense. Because some of you, not all of you, I'm picking up what you're, how the way you're helping them is after you take something from them energetically. I don't know if you're even aware of it. Um, but those of you that this applies to, as I'm saying this, it will echo. You will feel it in your... Bone, you might not like it so much, but you will feel it, okay? Let's look at the cards and go deeper into the reading. I'm going to do what I like to call the existential shift spread, um, where I take the major arcanas. So here we have judgment and empress. There's a rebirth. Beautiful self. And then we have two aces, ace of swords, ace of cups, and court card of queen of cups, oh, and two nines, nine of cups, nine of swords, two, five, eight, ten. They're not the focal point of this part of the reading. So... Oh, by the way, before I continue, if you want to deepen your esoteric
Mystical Studies. Tarot Masterclass Bunka is now available for unlimited streaming over on Patreon. That's on top of the other VIP content there, so check it out. Links is below. And other links are below and description in the description box. Okay? Uh, so check it out. All right. Let me look for a second. I am going to also look at the fact that we have two twos here, 20 and two, because they came out together. Two aces. So I'm going to also see it as two, two, two. I'm still here. I'm just looking at the cards and thinking about their numerical values and what else they bring up in this reading. You have got to stop putting yourself in trauma bondings and difficult emotional situations that are very and relationships that are very heavy heavy and burdening and don't bring you joy because you feel like you want to be needed. I'm sorry if that was a read and I know it's not easy to hear, but you're not doing anyone any good, not you, not them. If you genuinely love the person and there's healthy energetic exchange between the two of you, great. It doesn't apply to that relationship. There's a guidance to have a new type of relationships, a new type of connection that is coming from a very clean, clear mindset and emotional space of sincerity and honesty and equality I'm picking up. Relationships that have been based on one person feeling good, good about themselves at the expense of another person being in a difficult situation are coming to a close. And I feel like it's you waking up to that aspect in you. Wanting to genuinely be a maternal, loving, empathic, healing, guiding, therapeutic presence in their life that is unconditionally giving because you can, because you have the energy source. And, you know, source is really speaking to you right now, a lot, teaching you, guiding you as to how to tap into that infinite source of energy. I'm feeling the nut in my stomach. Like you, you it, this, this reading is, is really grabbing you in your stomach. I feel like it's not easy, um, and I'm sorry. But this reading also have an incredibly poignant healing energy to it. It's accelerated, catalytic type of um, message. Accelerating, catalytic message. That's what I meant to say. One one nine nine eleven. This is not you anymore, the person who does that, who chooses people because of, because of how they make them feel in comparison. A great way to test yourself, do you love them? and like them only when they're in need. And once they do well, you have a little bit of a issue that you can't explain. Are you there only in the hard times, but not there in the celebratory times? Right? When they're going something through something bad, 
Is there something in you that feels relief about it? This is not an easy reading, Aqua. I, I could play, I could have chosen to play with you and pretend that I'm talking about someone else that you're dealing with. But I want to give my seekers more credit. This is the existential shift. The existential shift is not something that is a walk in the park. It can be. A park is part of the existence, right? But to genuinely shift into our highest potential, we have to face our toxic selves. And we all have toxic selves, right? It doesn't mean that we ourselves are a toxic person or a spirit, but we do things in ways of completing what is lacking because that's what we've learned for whatever reason, each to their own, you know, life circumstances. But at one point, you felt like your connection to source is blocked and instinctually you started taking energy from others. This does not negate the fact that you are a beautiful, sweet, loving person. We all have our wounds and our ways of dealing with them. Watch my 13th element on the 13th uh, element playlist. Um, a narcissist is an empath who had enough. The triggering truth about, you know, narcissist versus empath, the triggering truth. It's not exactly the same situation here that I'm picking up, but it has a similar um, mechanism to it of how hurt people end up hurting other people. It's just what it is, you know? But that there's a way out. And I feel like Saturn retrograding in your sign, it's about to move direct at the end of the month, by the way, on the 23rd or on the 24th, 23rd. And it's coming through here, 20 and 3, 23rd. So Saturn moving direct has a strong influence on this. You have a short window of time until then from when you're watching this in October to generate this transformation so that when Saturn goes direct, it's easy as opposed to harder. Because if you'll double down and won't, then Saturn going direct will give a lesson that will force it, right? And this is a guidance on how to avoid it in a good way. Hear it in the whisper so you don't have to hear it in the shout, right? Some of you are incredibly intuitive and empathic and you really know how to recognize when so people's buttons and it's important. Now, I'm not saying all of you are doing it, but some of you out there, just ask yourself, do I utilize these buttons that I recognize in people to help them or to be in some sort of advantage in one way, shape, or form? Because you're brilliant mentally and spiritually and emotionally. You are absolutely brilliant inside. But some of you have taken it to a indulging uh, place. This is your highest potential, an awakener, a goddess. You can be a man, it has nothing to do with it. Divine femininity. Infinite source of creation. And then rebirth. There's a birth here. Some of you, let's 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 just talk more mundane tarot. Um Nines, Ace of Cups, Empress Judgment. Some of you are getting pregnant, finding out that you're pregnant and it might be a surprise to you. You did not expect it. Maybe you feel like you don't have the time for it. Maybe you don't. You feel like you don't have the resources to it. Maybe you feel like you don't have the energy. Um, take your time as much as as, as much as uh, as much as possible in this in this scenario to think it through. Okay? Because this could be a huge blessing in disguise. Suddenly a mother I'm picking up. <laughs> a 
And you can literally, and you could be suddenly a mother regardless of actual maternity, you know, meaning from a place that you thought you were mothering people around you and are kind to them to becoming someone who's actually mothering people around and is kind to them. You choose who you are. This is the moment. You're free to do so. Anything else about this new start of two aces? This could be a new partnership. Anything else specifically about these two aces for Aqua? Could be a new job. Could be a, a new study endeavor. Um, so, uh, new energy, fluidity into something that you've invested a lot of time and effort into that maybe not reaped as many rewards as you wanted to, but suddenly the energy when Pluto moves direct and when Saturn moves direct, like things starting to flow in a better way, in an easier way. Newfound faith in something that you want to invest in. Or this could be a, a new work partnership or even a new love, romantic partnership. Three of Pentacles at the bottom of the deck. Yes, I see a, I see a work collaboration. It could be very, very beneficial. And bottom of the deck, another nine. Reap a lot of financial reward. And I think like it's destined. We have multiple nines, judgment. It might be like a destined soul, uh, soul contract. Or there's genuine teamwork. Something gets built in a way that you didn't expect in a positive way. Okay, Seekers, uh, thank you very much, Aqua, for being a brave mofo and sticking around to the end. Everything is here in this link. Um, if you're new, be sure to subscribe and give this video the like, the thumbs up. Even if it wasn't easy to hear, it was important to hear. So, you know, <laughs> help me help more people by helping this video echo in the realm of YouTube. Thank you. I love you. Bye.